Step right up everyone and see the magnificent Broken Meeple Circus Show featuring guest stars as the Takinoko Panda Bear. Watch him do just about nothing except hold a brolly. It's exciting. And of course the daring Broken Miku Acrobats. See the two, see how they majestically stand on top, stand on top, stand on top, top, there, there we go. It's It's a good thing that I never decided I wanted to be a circus performer at any point in my life. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and this is another Broken Meeple review for another expansion to the critically acclaimed classic that is Carcassonne. You can see this is the original version, I think maybe the second edition by Z-Man Games, you know, when they upgraded a few things. But I've had this one since, God, since I started board gaming. I think this must have been one of the first few games I purchased after I tried it because I just love the simplicity of it. I love the whole, most games I love where you build something in front of you. Here you get to build a whole map. It just really sang to me. And the expansions so far have been hit and miss, I will say. I still hold that the first two expansions, the Carcassonne, the Inns Cathedrals and the Traders and Builders are essential. You need them for everyone, you know, any, anybody who's got the basic version needs those two expansions. And, you know, you're going to have to get the newest artwork version. I have the old artwork version and I personally prefer it. But as you say, you can pick up the, you know, the new revamped Carcassonne for you know a fairly cheap price and if you're willing to wait a while for reprints you can get those two expansions soon although here's a tip buy the German versions you won't need the boxes so it doesn't matter and the rules are easy to find online in English so there's a top tip for you if you want to get those two expansions now but don't want to wait for English reprints so yeah not every expansion though has been great for Carcassonne there have been a few duds and a few like Nah. And there was big boxes and mini expansions. There's been so much for this game, it's completely unreal. But I love it, and it's still an evergreen in my gateway game collection. Now we've got another one. Number 10, Carcassonne Under the Big Top. This one, as you can tell from my intro in this video, has a big circus theme wrapped around it. So you've got the big top tent, you've got ringmaster meeples, and you've got acrobat meeples. So what does this add to the game? Is it, you know, does it make much of a difference or is it just another one of those gimmicks that you can throw in from time to time? Let me give you a quick overview of what's in the box and then I'll get on to my thoughts. As expected, you will need the base set of Carcassonne to play this expansion. This expansion adds three new modules that are ideally used in conjunction with each other when using this in the game. First up, you have a nice collection of tiles. Some of these tiles will have circuses on them and some will have spaces for acrobats on them. And they may contain their own little mix of cities and roads. You will also get some animals with values on them as well as a big top tent miniature. And of course, a ringmaster meeple because let's face it, there's not enough meeples in this game already, is there? The circus tiles are definitely the focus for this expansion. Every time a circus tile comes out, one of those tokens with the values on them will be placed face down in secret underneath the tent without anyone looking at them. The game will then proceed as normal until another circus tile is placed out. When this happens, the first circus tile is scored and each meeple surrounding or on that separate tile will score points equal to the value of the revealed token. At this point, the tent miniature and another token is then placed on the new circus tile that appeared during the game. So this causes the tent and those tokens to pop around all over the Carcassonne map and players will be tempted to place meeples in close proximity to the circus in order to potentially score anywhere from one measly point to a whole seven points per meeple. 
The second set of tiles in this game are the Acrobat tiles. They come with two spaces. There are no actual Acrobat meeples, but every time one of these places is put out, you may place your meeple on one of the spots. In the future, any player who places a tile at any point around that first tile is allowed to, instead of placing a robber or a knight or a cloister, for example, is allowed to place one of their meeples on the other space on the tile. And then again, a third player who comes along, and it could be one of the players who's already gone before, can place a tile and then place one of their meeples on top of the two already to form a meeple pyramid. Once this is done, players will score five points for each of their meeples that form inside this pyramid. Fairly simple to play, fairly simple to score, but certainly a lot more difficult to actually get three meeples to stand on top of each other. And finally you have the Ringmaster. The Ringmaster is a very straightforward meeple. In most circumstances he functions as a traditional meeple, so he can be used as a robber, knight, monk, whatever. But if he is next to any of the circus or acrobat tiles, when he scores himself for his own feature, the Ringmaster will score you points for every circus or acrobat tile that surrounds him. So you want the Ringmaster to be close to the expansion tiles in this game. And that's essentially it. You mix the tiles with the original ones in the bag or in stacks, however you want to play it, and those are the three new rules placed in Under the Big Top. Okay, so first things first, this one is based on the new artwork from the 2015 edition of Carcassonne. So when I use this with my version, there is a bit of a color mismatch with the, you know, the artwork on the tiles. It's a little noticeable, particularly with the cities, but it's up to you whether that's going to bother you too much or not. I'm not that fussed. This is the only expansion that does that for me at the moment because I have all the other expansions. Well, I don't have all the expansions, but all the ones that I have are in the old style artwork. So this is the one exception and you know, it's not a big deal for me. It's certainly better than going out and buying the base set, two expansions and another couple of expansions, you know, in the new artwork. It's just not worth it. And personally, I prefer the simpler artwork from before. That's a general consensus I'm seeing on the internet, but you know, take it or leave it. Whichever artwork you like best, it's the same game at the end of the day. This expansion I would certainly say is one of the easier expansions to implement into the game. There are only three modules. The rules of them are very straightforward. You know, one of the modules is so dirt simple it's unbelievable. And you could probably throw this into every normal game of Carcassonne and teach people anew and they wouldn't really have much of a problem with it. Of course, I always suggest that if you're brand new to Carcassonne, just play the base set only. Maybe within the cathedrals if you've got it. But otherwise, you know, just keep the base set of Carcassonne just so people get the hang of the mechanics. But straight after, you could throw this one in and not really have a problem with it. The circus theme definitely comes out in the tiles themselves, although it's a little bit weird that you have the tile which basically is just an empty patch of sand, effectively, where you put the space, um, where you put the tokens and the meeples. So, you know, it would be nice for them to have more of a visual flair. You get a little bit of detail in there of things like, you know, circus tents and that, but you don't get a huge amount else on the tiles, at least nothing that would blow you away in terms of the Carcassonne style artwork. But the three modules in turn. My favourite is definitely the, the big top one, the circus ones. Because what this does is, yes, it's a bit of a push your luck, a little bit of extra, well, it's a bit of luck in general. Because those tokens that you put on range from one to seven. Getting a lot of meeples next to a flea circus, which only gives you one point, is definitely more crippling than putting two or three next to a tent that has that seven elephant token underneath there. So you have to accept that there's a little bit of extra luck there. But what I love about that circus tent is that the big top keeps popping around all over the Carcassonne map. So it pops up and you think, oh, I could, if I could put my knight there, robber there, I can be right next to that tent, I might get some extra points. So it almost guides people to aim for that tent. Now you don't have to, you could just ignore it and let it go forward and concentrate on somewhere else, but it gives you that extra little, ooh, should I, could I, I could put something there that might work rather than concentrate on this bit here. 
and that works really well with you know it scoring points and you'll get several of these scored during the game in fact you'll get a lot of these scored during the game some of them will just be nil points because nobody was next to them but some of them are going to be big earners potentially and it's great to have the the dynamic of the tent like going all over the place like it, it was in the top corner here now it's all the way down here and oh it does cause a very nice dynamic if you're willing to put up with the extra bit of luck involved the acrobats they're okay i can take it or leave it but the the thing with the acrobats that's a, a little bit fiddly is well i mean you don't have to do this but i mean if you're one of these ocd people who wants to stack everything then have fun with this because i don't know if i'm just bad at it but i seem to have trouble stacking meeples in an acrobat form you have to be kind of careful with it you don't have to do it in order to score the points but you know visually you're gonna want to do it the, the rules for them work just fine really you know it's pretty simple just put a tile around that one and you have a second choice of either to do what you could originally do or put an acrobat down and five points is nothing to sneeze at for a meeple so a lot of the time you'll probably just stick to putting an acrobat down on this tile but you know you might be trying to get into a farm or trying to get into a big city and of course that might sway you otherwise I don't like it as much as the Circus Big Top module, but, you know, I'm still fine with it. And it certainly gets a good reaction from players when they go, oh, I can stack my little meeples on. I would have liked for them to have actually put some, you know, Acrobat meeples in the box. But, eh, no big deal. Just use the ones you've got. That's the whole point of it anyway. But, yeah, it's a decent expansion. It's very cheap to get hold of. There's only so many components in the box other than the tiles. So it does keep the price point down. It's easy to implement into a base set version of Cargazone. You could literally just have base set plus this and it would give a nice little twist on the game without being too complex for new players. But if you want to be a, like, you know, a gamer Cargazone and throw this in with a few other things, it'll gel pretty well and it won't take you very long to teach the new rules. So I personally could recommend this one as a good expansion to get. And yeah, I think it does what it needs to do. Not too complicated. Adds a few neat little rules, nice little quirky fun. I just wish maybe the tiles just had some more artwork on them to make them a little bit more interesting. And, you know, like I said, I was expecting a few more rules in the box, but, you know, three basic concepts is not too much. I don't want it to complicate things too, you know, too heavily with Carcassonne. So, yeah, not as good as others, but I still think a good middle-of-the-road expansion. I'm going to give this one eight Dancing Acrobats. I think it's solid, I think it's definitely worth getting, but maybe after you've got some of those essential expansions first. But I'm gonna keep this, it's still sitting in my uh, Carcassonne box at the moment, although you don't need this one, so. Objection! That sounded a lot worse than it is. But you know, I don't need that box, so therefore everything's just gonna sit in here nicely. And I've got a broken token insert that came in the post today to build into this and arrange my tiles nicely. So I'd better go on with insert, you know, assembling that right now. So I'm gonna leave you with Carcassonne under the big top, recommended expansion. Take care, and remember, all your meeples know this as well as you do, it's still only a game. See you soon on the next show.